the ruler over Idrea and Trochitus, and, Lys and Lysani was the ruler over Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, God's word came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John went throughout the region of the Jordan River, calling for the people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted to, God to forgive their sins. This was just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight, every valley filled, every mountain and hill will be leveled, the crooked will be made straight, and the rough places made smooth, and all of humanity will see the salvation of God. This is the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now, really, how many of you are ready for Christmas? Just raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Now, don't lie because God will, I mean, uh, Santa will put you on his naughty list. I mean, if December 24th were today, would it be okay? For some of you, it would. For others, like me and the rest of us here, you know, I still have gifts to buy, packages to wrap. I've got Christmas lights to put up, a few more decorations. All the stockings are not hummed by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nick will soon be there. There is still a lot of work to do between now and December 25th. But is there anywhere, anyone here who's just simply been sitting around doing nothing? And husbands, before you answer that question, I would ask that you consider your words very, very carefully. Now, some of us already have our plans made. We've, we've set the menu. We haven't bought all the food yet, but some of you, I'm sure, have already started baking the Christmas goods, perhaps even preparing some things and freezing them because of the onslaught of family that will be coming. But ready or not, Christmas is coming. And that, to me, begs the question, are we really ready? Not just for the gifts and the celebrations, but are we really ready for the coming of the Christ? Have we looked for him in Walmart or in the stores that we shop? Have we been expecting Christ's appearance? Or have we been preparing for something else? You know, as we think about our preparations for Christmas, we have to think about how long God has been preparing for this moment. From the very beginning of time, we discover that the word that was made flesh was actually the babe of Bethlehem, the man named Jesus, whom we know. That from the very beginning of time, God had this plan in mind for the salvation of the world by his visitation to this planet. And at the right time, Luke says, in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was the governor of Judea, Philip was the governor over Galilee, 
And Annas and Caiaphas were the high priest in the temple. You notice I skipped over those difficult names. <laughs> but the point is that at a particular time and place, God's son would be born. And the word of his coming would be given to John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord. It did not happen by mere circumstance. God had planned it all along. And ready or not, God is coming. And John's message is simply this. He says, change your hearts and your minds. Another way of interpreting that is repentance. That's the more common term. But I like the way that uh, the uh, Common English Bible puts it. Have a change of heart. Live your life differently. That's what it means to truly repent. Repentance is more than just saying, I'm sorry. True repentance first comes with the awareness that we live in broken relationships and that we have harmed other people. It is to reject our own pride. For some of us would rather be right than be in relationship, but you can't have both. You can be right and out of relationship, or you can be in relationship and it doesn't matter whether you're right or not. But all of these ways are ways in which we are to prepare for the true meaning of Christmas. Now, I don't know anybody for whom repentance is at the top of their, of their wish list from Santa. Do you? That's not really what we want, but we best give it some thought because we are indulging in our own Christmas gluttony, a holiday of self-indulgence that leaves us spiritually empty and oftentimes in debt. You see, advertisers want to create a sense of anxiety within us, that sense of urgency, and they're right about that. Christmas is coming, but not in the way that we think. Christ is made manifest before us and in us. The truth is that we live in a sinful and broken world. Our families are not the families perhaps we had hoped for. There is dysfunctionality all around us, and you may have already experienced it during Thanksgiving, that somehow you would hope this year that would be the one day when everybody would get along. And if you don't know anyone in your family who is dysfunctional, <laughs> you're probably him or her. <laughs> but God loves us. And God has prepared a way for us and is longing for our return to him. It's not about the gifts under the tree, though I enjoy receiving them. It's not about the glitter and the lights. It's a matter of the heart. That's where we need to get ready. And we simply get ready by acknowledging who we are. We are a people in need of God's grace and God's forgiveness. 
And because we have been forgiven, we extend that same grace and forgiveness towards others. Oh, it's time to prepare. Christmas is coming, whether, whether we are ready or not. Christ will be born. May God bless us in this Christmas season as we prepare for him. Amen. <laughs>